when you enter a state of ketosis, you elevate ketone levels in the blood. And as mentioned, these ketone uh, bodies function, truly function as an alternative energy substrate that the brain can readily use. So mm -hmm. uh, there is basically free flow of <laughs> ketone bodies across the blood brain barrier mm -hmm. and they can enter, they can cross cell membranes, mitochondrial membranes and be used as uh, a high energy metabolite to make ATP. And we know that. So um, there are, as we age, our capacity to use glucose uh, declines with aging or uh, I would even say that Every neurodegenerative disease is in some way pathophysiologically linked to uh, impaired glucose metabolism. So I think that would be a true statement, whether it's mm -hmm. ALS, whether it's uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, even Parkinson's disease, mm -hmm. uh, and of course there's neurometabolic disorders like PDH deficiency, glucose mm -hmm. transporter type 1 deficiency, which is something mm -hmm. that I study, and a whole host of things uh, that I frequently talk about that are associated with impaired. So by virtue of simply elevating and making another uh, energy metabolite available, that can impact overall cognitive function, brain energy metabolism, and help to stabilize the uh, the, I would call the bioenergetic effects of the brain, and in doing so, that in, in supplying this alternative energy substrate, which feeds into the Krebs cycle, also mm -hmm. called the TCA cycle, so that that Krebs cycle uh, is also the source of many of our neurotransmitters. For example, uh, alpha ketoglutarate can make glutamate which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, important for learning and memory. When it gets too high, it can be excitotoxic and contribute to things like seizures or, uh, mm -hmm. or even you know, oxidative stress in the brain. The ketogenic diet can elevate glutamate levels, but it also converts more of that glutamate to a neurotransmitter that has a brain stabilizing effect, and that would be GABA through the activation, the increased production and activation of glutamic acid decarboxylase, we convert more of an, uh, uh, an excitatory neurotransmitter, glutamate, to GABA, which is, uh, we call it an inhibitory neurotransmitter, but I think of it as a calming brain stabilizing neurotransmitter. So and it helps balance the ratio of excitatory versus inhibitory, sort of like the yin and yang of the brain. Uh, and in, in some ways, especially if we adhere to strict ketosis, it further elevates GABA levels in the brain, so the GABA to glutamate ratio is higher. And I think this elevated GABA to glutamate ratio contributes, uh, quite convincingly, the data can, says that it contributes to the anti-seizure effects. Mm. And we know that many anti-convulsant drugs, uh, a number of them, Vigabatrin, for example, you know, works through a GABAergic mechanism. So the ketogenic diet, the one of the dozens of, of mechanisms working in synergy is an elevation of this GABA to glutamate ratio. And not only does that have a brain stabilizing effect where we might be able to think better, uh, but it also prevents seizures and it may have an anti-anxiety effect.